them and we're starting the show here with the owner and he's got a security guard in his office. And he says, right, listen up. You're my security. I pay you. You do what I say. First off, Dr. Khan is not permitted in this building. If you see him, I want it escorted off the premises. Secondly, I want you to get out there, find Nightmare, and tell him I want to speak to him. The owner doesn't seem happy at all. And the security guard says, okay, sure thing. He seems like a pretty nice guy, to be fair. And the owner says, well, what are you waiting for, then? Get the hell out of my office and do it! The owner is not in a good mood to start the show here, ladies and gentlemen. He sounds like he is on fire. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to XWF26. I'll be honest with you, I did bring a nice suit for today, but I spilled some red wine down it on the way here. So I had to wear a freaking referee shirt. I'd probably do a better job than the refs in there anyway. Oh no, no, no. Nightmare and the owner backstage, not looking forward to this exchange. And the owner says, Nightmare, last show was the most embarrassing night of my life. First of all, Dr. Karn showed up. He is fired. He had better not dare show up tonight. Secondly, you help Junction in a match. Then, you put yourself in danger to help none other than Luke Loins. And the owner says, I spoke to you about this last week, Nightmare. This has gone too far. Let me put it in black and white for you. You need to make a choice. You do what I say, and you stop making choices off of your own back, or you become an enemy of the CWO. That's your choice, Nightmare. And Nightmare says, Owner, think about this. We don't need to be enemies. The XWF needs to come together. And the owner says, It sounds like you made your choice. Get out of here. This is over. Get out of my office. And Nightmare just walks off and says, Whatever, owner, whatever, and he goes. Now, what does this mean? I don't, I don't get it. Is the CWO now enemies with Nightmare or something? Is that what the owner was saying? I don't know. I don't like the idea of this anyway. When they're backstage now, the Greville, what the hell? He's walking into Skinner's locker room and he says, well, well, well. Hello, Skinner. Or more like, skinny. Actually, no, no, no. Because you're not really skinny, are you? What is he saying? What is, he, what is the Greville saying? He's going to get his freaking ass kicked. And the Greville says, are you looking forward to getting your ass kicked tonight then, Skinner? And Skinner says, bruv, you're a little scrawny. I'm not even going to say that word because we're on live freaking TV. And Skinner is not going to get away with saying that, but he said it. And Skinner says, I'm going to kick the daylights out of you, you pathetic piece of crap. You know, I feel a little bit sorry for Grebel, even though he's a cock, he's in big trouble. And Skinner says, the Bronx Bunny will go on to win the Tag Division Championships of Warpath. And the Grebel says, oh, is that so? Okay, if you're so certain you can beat me. Let's make it no holds barred tonight. What the hell? The Grebel, man, he's, 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 he's suicidal to do that. And Skinner says, you want to get in the ring with me and weapons. You're a fool, but you're on. Oh, God, this is not good for the Grebel. And the Grebel says, well, I'll see you in a bit then. And he walks up all cocky. And Skinner just, look, he looks happy because he knows he's going to have weapons now. He's going to have weapons in this Tag Division Singles Tournament. And if he wins, he gets a shot at the Hardcore Hate Crew of Warpath. And we're backstage now with the Fosher and Grebel. And Fosher says, Grebel, did Skinner take the gauntlet? And Grebel says, oh, yes, he did. Hook, line, and sinker. And Fosher says, brilliant. Those tag team titles are ours. These guys are in frickin' denial. How do they genuinely think 
the Greville is gonna beat Skinner, no holds barred. That's the most ridiculous thing. Anyway, a bit of news for you guys. Luke Loins and Junction are both absent this week. You know, obviously down to the beatdowns they took last week. But uh, let's look at the matches we got tonight. We got Skinner versus the Greville, no holds barred for the tag tournament. And then Jacob Drake takes on Havoc in a street fight match. You know, I just want to see Jacob Drake beat Havoc because he's one of Tommy T. Thomas' men now. I just want to see it happen. So we got uh, the Grebel now making his way down to the ring. I've got no idea why the Grebel went into Bronx Bunny's locker room at the start of the show and said, Skinner, I challenge you to make this match a no holds barred match. No holds barred. And obviously Skinner said, all right, then. Because he just knows now he can go and get a chair and beat the shit out of Grebel's face with it. You know, I'm sort of getting in Greville's mindset, thinking, you know, Greville knows he can't win a one-on-one -on -one match with Skinner, so if he can use weapons, maybe he can get an advantage. But what you gotta think is, Skinner can get the weapons as well, you freaking idiot. You know, Greville is not the brightest freaking light bulb going, but, you know, we're gonna see what's gonna happen. In other words, Skinner's gonna win, and I, I just wanna get a stopwatch and see how long it is, how long this match takes, because I'm don't. i not betting it's gonna be a long one. I'm not betting it's gonna be a long one at all. But, um, you know, there's a lot on the line in this match. Whoever wins out of the Greville or Skinner, their tag team will go on to face the Hardcore Hate crew at our next pay-per-view warpath for the tag division titles. So there's a lot on the line. There's a lot on the line. And, you know, I think maybe that's why Greville went. Look, I want to make it a no host bar match. Because, you know, he knows he wants to be the tag division champions. As much as T-Unit are never going to be the tag division champions. They do want it. They've got the drive to be the tag division champions, but, uh, you know, that's why, that's obviously why the Greville wanted to try and even the playing field with weapons, but, um, somehow I think it was a silly maneuver, because now he's basically giving Skinner the options now, just tear him apart with freaking weapons. And then Skinner is just making his way down to the ring now, as you can see. A very violent man, a man that has an MMA background. You know, a cage fighting background, a very undisciplined man, and you'd think because he was an MMA fighter and a cage fighter that he'd be very disciplined, and I'll tell you now, he's got some good punches and knees and elbows on him, but if you watch his style, now that he's in the squared circle and wrestling, he, his, his style is very undisciplined, the way that he throws punches, the way that he uses his head as a weapon, the way that he knees his opponents, and just, you know, it's a very vicious man, and I'm not looking forward to him. The Grebel's chances, you know, I, I, I just not rate in the Grebel's chances one bit, and the fans are loving it, because, you know, they're not all messy fans of the Bronx Bunny, but they do all hate T-Unit, and if they're going to see the Grebel get his ass kicked, then the fans are definitely going to get involved, but, um, you know, I'm looking forward to the street fight later on tonight, we got a very violent show by the sounds of it, you know, we've got this match, no holds barred, we've also got a um, street fight of the Havoc versus um, Jacob Drake. But uh, let's start on with this match anyway. The referee rings the bell. Skinner and the Greville walking in. Look at Skinner just going straight on the attack with these heavy strikes. Absolutely vicious. Oh my god. Look at the strength in Skinner. Picking Greville up like he weighs freaking nothing. He just drops him down face first onto the mat. The Greville is looking like a strong wind. Could knock him over already. You know, look at him. He doesn't even look like he's awake. Skinner, oh my god. He just punched him over the top rope. Clothesline style. Greville trying to get up to his feet. Skinner's turning him around. Oh my god. Look at this. He just throws Greville into the audience barrier. Skinner just dragging him away from it now. Look at this. He just throws him into the crowd. The fans just cheering and what the hell. Oh my god. Skinner's going under the ring already. The Greville's trying to roll himself over the barrier. He's looking he's looking out cold already, man. He's got nothing left in the tank. Skinner's got a freaking chair. And oh my god. Right in between the eyes of Greville. Greville collapses to the floor. Skinner threw the freaking chair at him. You know, I think Skinner's just enjoying this moment. He just throws the Greville into the steel stairs. The Greville just collapsed. Now Skinner picking the Grebel up, grabbing him by the head and just smashing his head on the outside ring post. And again, oh my god. Rolling the Grebel in the ring. I think this could be over, I really do. Skinner's getting in the ring, maybe going for a pin. What the hell? Static just came over the crowd. He just jumped over the audience barrier. He's just coming, what the hell is Static doing? Static, what are you doing? Static shock on freaking Skinner, what the hell? He's got nothing to do with this match. Freaking XWA guys, just because Tommy T. Thomas owns half of the XWF now, they think they can just show up. The Grebels saw the events unfold, Static's gone, and Grebels just walking over, he's going to take advantage, going for the cover, that's one, that's two, that's three, oh my god, what the hell? 
T-Unit go through and attack the Vision Tournament. That is disgusting. Look at the replay. Static just comes up. Skinner had the match in the freaking bag. All he had to do was pin the Grebel. And Static just gives him a Static Shock. And Skinner just bounces off, cricking his neck from the Force. Static just walks off. It's no holds barred, so the ref can't do jack about it. And the Grebel just pins Skinner one, two, freaking three. I can't believe it. My god, we're gonna see T-Unit versus the Hardcore Hate Crew of Warpath. You know, a bit anticlimactic in my opinion. And what the hell, the owner now approaching A-Bomb backstage, and the owner says, A-Bomb, A-Bomb. And A-Bomb says, what's up, boss? And the owner says, have you seen Nightmare going behind our backs? Undoing everything we have built. I'm losing control of the show here, A-Bomb. Tommy T. Thomas. Dr. Khan appearing. And now Nightmare. Going against my word. Abom? Nightmare has pretty much given a middle finger to the CWO with that move. Well, Nightmare has made his choice. So here's what I'm gonna do. You want that world title? I'm gonna book you versus Nightmare. Because he needs to be taught a lesson. What the hell? Nightmare versus Abom? And the owner says if you destroy him, I will give you a world title shot at Warpath. What? And Avon says a world title shot. Well, you're on then, owner. Put me in the ring with that traitor. And the owner says, good. Tear him apart. No, no, no. They're, they're, what the hell? They're friends. Avon versus Nightmare. And if Avon wins, he wins a world title shot at Warpath. The owner has turned Avon against Nightmare. That is sickening, owner. Now we're backstage with Tommy T. Thomas, Damage, and Lord Lore. And Tommy T. Thomas says, Guys, last week went better than I could have planned. What? How did it? Dr. Karin came down and kicked everyone's ass. And Tommy T. Thomas says, It's always about the bigger picture, Damage. We injured Junction and Luke Loins. We've drawn Dr. Karn back to the XWF. And the owner is self-destructing. Even if we were forced out of the ring last week, we still succeeded. Now, I've got a plan for tonight, and it starts with you, Lord Lore. Tommy T. Thomas always has a frickin' plan. And Tommy T. Thomas says, I'll tell you more about it in a second. But Damage, could you go and find Havoc for me? And Damage says, sure thing. And Tommy T. Thomas says, great. Okay, now, Lord Lore, listen up. Oh, and they frickin' take the camera away, as always. But, um, Mike Jacobs' music now playing. Mike Jacobs isn't booked tonight. But, you know, he'll always squeeze himself into the show if he can. You know what he's like. Using, using a freaking mustard color attire there. Is it mustard? I don't know. It's like a rusty, a rusty color. I don't know. An orangey, rusty, mustardy, wild, whatever. Whatever. It's different attire. I've never seen Mike Jacobs wear that attire before. But, you know, the internet champion. He's making his way down to the ring. So far, he's done great credibility for that title. He said, I will bring credibility to the Internet Championship. And ever since beating Junction for it at our last pay-per-view, that's all he's done. He has brought credibility back to it. Every single match he has had for that belt, you know, every single match he's defended it has been a five-star match, in my opinion. You know, great match against Ryan Moore from Pegasus. Great match against Jamie Gregory from Pegasus. And a great, a great, a great, amazing match last week on Show 25 against his tag team partner, Steve Connor, in what, in my opinion, is one of the best matches we've ever seen in the XWF. You know, that is not me blowing hot air. If you don't believe me, if you haven't seen the show last week, go back and watch it. But Mike Jacobs is asking for a mic now, so let's see what he's got to say. Mike Jacobs says, I'm going to keep this short. There's no internet title match booked tonight. Which is an absolute disgrace. You know, I sort of agree with Mike Jacobs. It's the Internet Championship. It should be on the line. And Mike Jacobs says, so anyone out the back right now, come out here. Don't bring a mic, because I ain't got time for the talk. Just come down, get your ass kicked, and leave. And I leave tonight with another title defense. Go. Mike Jacobs just put an open challenge out here tonight on show 26. Who's going to accept it? Ho, ho, ho. Did not expect that. I did not expect Triple D to show up. You know, we haven't seen Triple D on the show for a couple of shows now, you know, actually. 
I'd say maybe at five, four or five shows we haven't seen Triple B for. And last time we saw him was when he was, uh, I think it was when he was fighting A-Bomb for the no host bar title. So it might even be more than five shows ago, you know. But I think this is a perfect moment for Triple D to maybe uh, turn the tide of his career. Because let's just say, you know, when he started, Triple D... He was he was looking like he was gonna be one of the biggest superstars the XWF had. You know, I remember that first match in Demolition Series, Triple D against Ken Tariff, and Triple D just dominated him. You know, nobody even knew Triple D was in the Demolition Series. And he just came down and instantly at that point everyone thought, Oh my god, Triple D is a real threat in the Demolition Series. You know, if I remember actually, he went on pretty far and I think he got eliminated by Nightmare, but um I think he even got down to the last four, thinking about it. So yeah, Triple D definitely did well in the first ever Demolition Series in the XWF. But since then, Arce's career has sort of gone on an up and down, up and down, up and down. You know, he needs something to give him, give him momentum. Because he's really lacking in the momentum at the moment. Beating Mike Jacobs for the Internet Championship could definitely give him that momentum. Jacobs isn't an easy task on the on the worst of days for Mike Jacobs, which he doesn't have many off, put it that way. But I'm looking forward to seeing how Mike Jacobs adapts his style to wrestle a bigger man like Triple D. And Mike Jacobs went for a kick. Triple D blocked it. Look at that belly to belly, side belly to belly there from Triple D. Lifting Mike Jacobs up, staying on the attack. Triple D with these heavy punches. Absolutely massive. And he just kicks Mike Jacobs out the ring. Oh my god. Great start here from Triple D. Look at, oh my god, look at this. Full Nelson, he picks him up, just throws him down on the outside. Absolutely horrific power from Triple D. He just grabs Mike Jacobs. Look at the strength in that. He just rolls him in the ring. Mike Jacobs rolls in. And Triple D just getting out on one knee and just throwing heavy fists into the back of the head of Mike Jacobs and then slamming his head on the mat. Triple D just dropping a knee on the back of Mike Jacobs' head. You know, could this be the end of the line for Mike Jacobs? Mike Jacobs blocks a punch from Triple D. Goes for his own, but Triple D blocks that. And now these heavy overhead punches from Triple D. A kick to the stomach of Mike Jacobs. Triple D goes for a punch. Mike Jacobs blocks it and returns with one of his own. Side headlock. Arm twist on Triple D. Into a headlock. Into a side headlock. Look at this technicality. Elbow to the back of the head from Mike Jacobs. And this is where he's going to start changing the tides of the battle. And start really using his technicality to just run rings around Triple D. Look at this. Triple D doesn't even know what's going on. And Mike Jacobs, all the strength in the world, he picks Triple D up and drops him down with a backdrop. Right on the top of the neck. Great precision move there from Mike Jacobs. And now Mike Jacobs, Irish whipping, Triple D into the corner, and a vicious shoulder thrust there. And Mike Jacobs runs in a knee to the jawline of Triple D. Triple, Triple D getting up to his feet, but Mike Jacobs staying on the attack with these elbow shots to the back of the neck. Really working on the neck area of Triple D here. Great technique from Mike Jacobs. Look at this. Turning... Triple D round and just launching an elbow into the jaw or neck area. And again, Mike Jacobs using the elbows on the shoulders and neck area. He knows what he's doing. He's pinpointing a part of Triple D's body and he is wearing it down as hard as he can. Look at that. A clothesline again aimed at the neck. This is a true veteran play here for Mike Jacobs. Just like I said, a backdrop onto the neck area again. Triple D holding his back. He's starting to feel the pressure building in his spine. And Mike Jacobs a slap. A slap to the throat. You know, Mike Jacobs, he's like a freaking torpedo, homing in on a specific body part. And look at that. Oh, Triple D with an STO, bouncing off the rope. Mike Jacobs was going to try some sort of precision maneuver, but Triple D managed an STO, and now he's trying to take control. Oh, my God, look at that strength in that massive body drop on Mike Jacobs. Powerful, powerful man is Triple D. You've got to avoid these heavy moves. Look at, look at that. Look at that strength. Oh, my God, he just throws Mike Jacobs down. Mike Jacobs looks like he weighs nothing when Triple D nails that maneuver. I think he was going to go for it again. Mike Jacobs reversed it, span the arm round. Triple D with a reversal of his own, out-technicalizing Mike Jacobs. Mike Jacobs doesn't like it. He's going in for the tie-up. And this time, Mike Jacobs wins to prove that Triple D was a fluke that time. Now, a side headlock. And then another side headlock onto the other arm. Mike Jacobs using an arm bar, an elbow to the elbow. Traditional move there, vintage Mike Jacobs. And now Mike Jacobs turns Triple D into a headlock. Oh, look at Mike Jacobs showboating with a scoop slam of his own. Getting the leg hooked. That's one and a kick out on one by Triple D. It's nowhere near enough to keep this man down. Mike Jacobs with a clothesline right in the jaw. And another clothesline right in the jaw. Enough to keep Triple D down. Mike Jacobs lifted him up. He knows exactly what he's doing. Another clothesline. Getting the leg hooked. 
That's one. A kick out on one again by Triple D. It's just not enough to keep him down. My Jacob is going to have to do a lot more than that. Triple D turns into a side headlock. Just a massive elbow to the face like a freaking freight train hitting you. Triple D throws Mike Jacobs over the rope. Mike Jacobs holds on, pulls Triple D's head onto the rope. Mike Jacobs gets in, picks Triple D up. Triple D goes for a punch. Mike Jacobs under the arm. Over a German suplex right on the head and lower back that he's been working on all match. And now he is torn in Triple D up to his feet. Triple D stunned. He doesn't know where he is. He turns around. No way. Look at the strength in Mike Jacobs' arm under. Viperplex for Mike Jacobs and he drops him on the neck. Precision play there for Mike Jacobs. This is over. That's one. That's two. That's three. Mike Jacobs defeats Triple D here tonight on XWF 26 and retains the Internet Championship yet again. You know, Mike Jacobs is a great internet champion. I don't know who is going to be able to take that belt off him. It's going to have to be someone extremely good. Because uh, as he's proven so far, he is holding that belt close. And he is not letting go. He's got a very tight iron grip on it. And, um, oh, what the hell? It's freaking, it's freaking Dave Crater. He's just coming out on the stage. He's pointing at his teacher, Mike Jacobs. And he's saying, I want a bit of that belt. I want that belt round my waist. Frickin' Dave Crater! Where is this gonna go? Dave Crater, is, is he putting out a challenge to Mike Jacobs? You know, Mike Jacobs has been caught by surprise. He keeps getting freaking caught by surprise lately. First Steve Connor last week, now Dave Crater, his pupil. Mike Jacobs' pupil, Dave Crater, wants some of the internet championship. I'm looking forward to seeing where that goes. Oh, the owner! He's just bumped into Dr. Karn backstage. And the owner says, well, well, well. Dr. Carr, does the term fired mean anything to you? You signed your name on that contract. You're legally banished from here. It's true, it's true, he did sign it. And the owner says, so how about you take yourself out of this building before I sue you into next year? And Dr. Carr says, owner, the reason I'm here is because the XWF needs me. You can sue me for the rest of my life, but the most important thing is the XWF and its fans. And at this rate, they aren't going to have a product to support. That's not to mention your roster, who work their asses off, are taking beatings from Tommy T. Thomas and his band of merry men. I knew I wasn't welcome here with open arms, but I am needed here. And the owner says, tough, Karn, tough. I'm going to find security. And the owner goes. And Dr. Karn doesn't look too happy about that. And what the hell now? Havoc's backstage. He's just walked into Tommy T. Thomas. And Havoc says, Damage said you wanted to speak to me. And Tommy T. Thomas says, yes, I did, Havoc. I did indeed. What's this about? What does he want to talk to Havoc about? Or is he going to have a camera cut so we don't get to see it? Oh, cryptic. And Tommy T. Thomas says, now you know that I see a lot of potential in you, Havoc. I said I would elevate you, make you a star, make you a legend. Well, I have a match for you tonight. Well, it's more than a match, actually. It's a main event. Wait a minute. Yeah, Havoc's double booked. He can't do that. And Havoc says, Tommy T. Thomas, it sounds great, but I'm already booked for a match next. And Tommy T. Thomas says, oh, well, what? That street fight with Jacob Drake? Forget that match. I've got that covered. I've got that sorted. But this is what I'm proposing to you. Oh, what the hell? Always the freaking camera cut, isn't it? With freaking Tommy T. Thomas. But Jacob Drake now making his way out to the ring. And what, is Havoc just going to no-show now? I'm not having it. This match was booked. This match was advertised to the fans. This match is happening. Jacob Drake versus Havoc. It's a street fight. So they better get their freaking way down. Because Jacob Drake is going to kick the teeth out of Havoc, and I'm looking forward to it. You know, Havoc has had this coming for a long time from Jacob Drake, and um, it's just about time that Havoc has his ass kicked. You know, he betrayed the CWO. And Jacob Drake is a loyal CWO member, and he has taken it into his hands to make this a street fight to kick the living hell out of Havoc, and I'm looking so forward to it. I've been looking forward to it since last week when it was announced. Got my popcorn, and what the hell? What the freaking hell? Jacob Drake's not looking too happy about this. I am not too happy about this. What the hell is Lord Lord doing here? 
What in the blue hell is Lord Lore freaking making his way down to the ring for? I, I don't. I'm not. I'm not feeling this. I'm not getting this. Where's Havoc? Where's Havoc chickening out now? Because he knew Jacob Drake was going to kick his freaking ass. And I'm hearing over my headpiece now that Lord Lore is actually taking Havoc's place. This is a street fight. Lord Lore versus Jacob Drake. And this is what the hell? This is unfair. Three clotheslines from Lord Lore. Jacob Drake wasn't ready for this. He didn't have a chance to prepare to fight Lord Lore. Jacob Drake went to punch him, and Lord Lore just threw him over his freaking head. Vicious. You know, Tommy T. Thomas, he's just taking freaking liberties, just making matches out of nowhere. Oh my god, Jacob Drake just went chest first into that turnbuckle pad. And again there, oh my god, Jacob Drake turns around, Lord Lord slipping under the arm. Oh my god, he just drops Jacob Drake down with a massive backdrop. It's disgusting, look at this Lord Lord, just holding the arm of Jacob Drake, just using elbows to the heart of Jacob Drake, just slamming him down. Absolutely vicious, Lord Lord picks him up. Now, Jacob Drake is at zero offense at this point. He wasn't ready for this. And Lord Lore runs in. Oh, nice. Jacob Drake moves out the way. A knee to the face of Lord Lore. Didn't see that coming, Lord Lore. Jacob Drake is faster or more agile than you. Smashing the head of Lord Lore on the mat. I'm liking it. Jacob Drake taking control of this match now. Using some heavy fists. Lord Lore blocks it and punches Jacob Drake in the face. Look at this combination of strikes from Lord Lore. Punching Jacob Drake into the corner. Oh, my God, no. These massive bicep clotheslines into the throat of Jacob Drake. Absolutely horrific. When is the ref going to Stop this madness. Look at these. Like a freight train just smashing Jacob Drake. Oh my god. When is it going to freaking stop? Jacob Drake just crumbles down to the mat like a freaking bag of bricks. And now Lord Lord picks Jacob Drake up. He kicks him down. Oh my god, the lore breaker. This is horrific. Oh wait, Jacob Drake. All the strength in the world. Samoa drop reversal from Jacob Drake. And he's picking Lord Lord up. He's picking Lord Lord up. Oh my god, the Drake break. The Drake break, he's locked it in. Drake break on Lord Lore. Oh my god, Jacob Drake's gonna pin Lord Lore. That's one. What the hell? Lord Lore kicked out the Drake break on one. The humanity. But Jacob Drake's just got a chair. So this is no holds barred. This is a street fight. He's coming in. He's gonna hit Lord Lore. Oh my god, Swift Justice. Out of nowhere. Swift Justice on Jacob Drake. And now Lord Lore's torn in Drake up. Drake doesn't know where he is, he's dizzy, he's dazed, he turns around, oh my god, no, Lord Lore puts him down into the Lore Breaker, arms hooked, Lore Breaker, and Jacob Drake decimated on the mat, Lord Lore rolls him up, leg hooked, that's one, that's two, that's three, Lord Lore beats Jacob Drake in a street fight here tonight on 26, absolutely unfair, absolutely disgusting. You know, what happened to the match that was advertised to the fans, that was advertised to me? You know, I, Tommy T. Thomas thinks he's in a freaking world of his own and he can just change stuff whenever he freaking wants. It's a liberty. Moving on, next week, we got another Cut Your Teeth Challenge open to anyone from any federation. Looking forward to seeing who turns up. We've also got the No Holds Bar Championship on the line. Matt King defends his title against Ken Tariff. I'm looking forward to that. Wait a minute, Tommy T. Thomas giving a message now. He says, I've got a little message. Dr. Khan, my old friend, I've spoken to security for you. And you're clear to be in the building without any repercussions. Tommy T. Thomas undercutting the owner here. And Tommy T. Thomas says, and because I'm such a nice guy, I've had a legal advisor look over your contract for you, Dr. Khan. And let's just say the whole firing malarkey can be forgotten about. The owner is not going to be happy about this at all. And Tommy T. Thomas says, I want you around, Dr. Khan. Mainly because I want to use you as a stepping stone. I have a great wrestler in the form of Havoc who could really benefit from beating you, Doctor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to book you in a match tonight. Khan, you versus Havoc. Enjoy, it's the main event. What the hell? The main event is Dr. Korn versus Havoc. You know, Tommy T. Thomas said he wants to use Dr. Korn as a stepping stone. You know, he's promised Havoc he'll make him into a star and stuff. And that's obviously the first step in what he wants to do. But, oh, God, now A-Bomb making his way down to the ring. You know, I'm not happy about this match. A-Bomb and Nightmare have been friends for a long time, you know. I remember they had some matches back in the CWA. Ages ago, ages ago, but now, you know, they've been friends for a long time in the CWO, they've watched each other's backs and stuff, and now Avon, 
he wants to be the world champion. He's missed two opportunities against Lord Lore. But the worst thing is now, the owner said to him, you want another shot? I'll give you a shot at the next pay-per-view, Warcraft. But, you gotta destroy Nightmare tonight. You know, the owner, if anyone has backstabbed anyone, it's the owner backstabbing Nightmare. You know, I know Nightmare has freaking done stuff that the owner doesn't agree with. Such as helping Junction, helping Luke Loins. But, you know, I'm starting to see Nightmare's logic. The XWF, it, it's been brutalized by Tommy T. Thomas. Ever since he came in, he started changing stuff. And, you know, it's it's just, it's not right. And now people are starting to stand up against Lord Moore. Luke Moynes and Junction, you know, people I'm not always a massive fan of, but I do have respect for the guys. You know, they stood up against Tommy T. Thomas and Nightmare joined them. And now Dr. Karn has even come back and, you know, he said to the owner earlier on, the XWF is in trouble. The XWF needs me to help stop Tommy T. Thomas. And the owner wasn't having any of it. And obviously said, I'm going to find security. But then Tommy T. Thomas undercut the owner and said, don't worry about it. You're not fired anymore, Dr. Karn. You're back on the roster. You know, I'm not looking forward to seeing the owner's reaction to that. But uh, either way, Nightmare's making his way down to the ring now. You know, he doesn't look like a man that wants to step in the ring with a friend. But um, Nightmare's always been one for surviving. And if this is what he's got to do, he's got to go against a friend who, quite frankly, is going to want to rip Nightmare's head off because Nightmare is a one-way ticket to the World Heavyweight Championship at our next pay-per-view warpath. Nightmare knows what he's got to do. He's got to survive. And if that means beating Avon tonight, that's what he's going to have to do. As I said, I'm still not I'm still not happy about this match, but um, my job is to uh, commentate, and I'm getting paid for it, so uh, let's get this match on the road. Avon looking cocky here earlier on. Nightmare and Avon locking horns. Who's the stronger man here? wins with an arm twist. Nightmare kicks him in the stomach. Nightmare throwing some punches. Avon blocks it. Punches him in the head. Now Avon with a combination of punches. One to the stomach. Nightmare now fighting back. Kick to the stomach. Avon blocks it. Clothesline right in the face of Nightmare. Knocking him off his feet. Now Avon using a side headlock. Elbow to the back of the head. Avon again with heavy punches. Getting very physical with this match early on. Two friends. They both know what's on the line. And now A-Bomb putting the head under and just elbow to the back of the head. And again, headlock from A-Bomb. Throwing Nightmare into the corner. Runs in a massive clothesline. Nightmare collapses to the mat. Avon definitely getting the better end of the offense early on here. Now Avon throwing Nightmare into the other corner. Runs in at another clothesline. Nightmare crumbles to the mat. Avon with the double axe handle to the ground. Vicious maneuver as he picks Nightmare up to his feet again. A side headlock from Avon. Look at that. Drags Nightmare in and just short arm clotheslines him. Nightmare taken out completely from that move. Avon picks him up again. Side headlock pushes him away. Short arm clothesline again. Nightmare crumbles to the mat. Avon picking him up again. Another side headlock. Grabs him by the arm. Oh, Nightmare turns the arm around. I think Avon was going to go for a short arm clothesline. Nightmare trips his leg. Snaps his leg. Great move there from Nightmare. Wearing down the leg of the big man. And now Nightmare under the arm of Avon. Big strength and Nightmare picking Avon up for a spinning backdrop. Vicious maneuver. Nightmare going for the cover. That's one and a kick out on one there by Avon. That's not what you do to keep down a man that wants to become the world champion. Nightmare, nice clothesline, taking the head off Avon. Side headlock, elbow to the back of the head. Nightmare, side headlock again, and elbow to the back of the head again. Great way to wear down the opponent here. And again, a third elbow to the back of the head by Nightmare. Side headlock, what's he going for this time? He's picked him up. Table suplex on A-Bomb. You know, not as much force as he normally does, but A-Bomb's a big guy. I'm surprised Nightmare managed to get him up for it. And now A-Bomb turns the hold into a headlock from his own short arm clothesline again. What are you got to do to keep A-Bomb down? Everything you do, he gets up and he's fighting fresh. Look at this. Punching Nightmare into the corner. A-Bomb, these vicious, feral-like shoulder butts to the stomach. And now A-Bomb just choking Nightmare out with his knee. Look at that, a stomp, and then using his knee to choke the air out of Nightmare. The eyes of a man that wants to become the world champion, and he will do anything it takes. Look at that European uppercut from Avon, nearly knocking Nightmare off his feet. Somehow, Nightmare managed to keep his balance, but Avon, Irish whips him off the ropes. What's he got planned? Look at that massive shoulder block. Oh, my God. Nightmare reeled back from the power. Now knees to the spine from Avon. Picking Nightmare off to his feet again. Really thin on the attack here. Look at this. Picking Nightmare up like he weighs freaking nothing. Look at this massive power slam from Avon. Just slamming Nightmare down with... Horrific force. Could be over. The leg is hooked. That's one. That's two. And a kick out on two by Nightmare. It's not enough. 
You can tell Abom is really going all out here. He knows what's on the line. He has had two shots at Lord Lore for the World Heavyweight Championship. Massive backdrop there by Nightmare. Dropping Abom on his freaking head for the cover. That's one. That's two, and A-Bomb kicks out. As I was saying, A-Bomb has had two shots against Lord Lore. Two shots which he failed to capture the World Heavyweight Championship. He wants that title so much. He said he has dreamed about it since he was a kid. And a third opportunity could be his moment. He knows all he's got to do is beat Nightmare for the owner tonight, and that opportunity is his. And you can see he's really going all out. A massive shoulder block to Nightmare. Avon putting everything he's got into this match as he picks Nightmare up. And just throws heavy punches into his abdomen. Nightmare falls back into the corner. Avon for a punch. Nightmare blocks it and just punches him square in between the eyes. Nightmare going for a punch. Avon blocks it in a massive clothesline. Knocking Nightmare off his freaking feet. Avon picks Nightmare up. What has he got planned for him this time as the Irish whips him. Draws him in. Look at this. Backbreaker there from Avon. And Avon gets the leg hooked. That's one. That's two. And a kick out there by Nightmare. That move there, the Pendulum Backbreaker, is the very move that Avon used to beat Nightmare in the Battle of Jay Dale. But it just wasn't enough this time. And Avon is staying on the attack as he picks Nightmare up, positioning himself behind Nightmare. Look at this. Oh my god, pump handle style throw over his freaking head. Nightmare smashing to the mat with a horrific amount of force. Avon driving Nightmare away from the ropes. Lateral pin. That's one. That's two, and a kick out on two by Nightmare. It's still not enough. Unbelievable kick out strength there from Nightmare. A bomb with a clothesline, knocking Nightmare to the floor. Picking Nightmare up at another clothesline. Great way to knock the air out of your opponent's lungs. And A bomb now again with these heavy clubbing fists. Nightmare blocks a massive punch from Nightmare, knocking A bomb off his feet with a strong right hand. And now Nightmare's on the attack with heavy fists. A left hand, another left jab there. A massive right hand, and A bomb collapses to the mat. Nightmare fighting A bomb at his own game in a fist fight here. Nightmare again. Strong left hand jabs and another one to the side of Avon's head and a right hook. And Avon collapses to the mat. And Nightmare is picking him up again and going for the same combination. A strong right hook. Another one. Avon goes down to the mat. Nightmare is all over Avon with these heavy punches. Reversal of the Irish whip from Avon. And Avon, oh my god, he throws Nightmare over his head. Freaking eight feet into the air. Nightmare comes crashing down the power of gravity. One, two, Three Nightmare kicks out just before the three. Unbelievable kick out strength from Nightmare. What has Avon got to do? A clothesline there. Avon just taking Nightmare down. Why he thinks of something bigger and more grand to use. And all oh, no. The signature submission of Avon. Locking in the bear hug maneuver. Squeezing Nightmare like as a freaking tube of toothpaste. Just squeezing the air out of his lungs. A move that just wears your body down and fills the lactic acid into all the limbs of your body. Nightmare starting to look weak. The lights are starting to dim in his vision. The ref is saying if you need to tap, you need to tap. You need to tell me I will win the match, I will ring the bell, but Nightmare is not about to give up, not now, look at this, Nightmare, all the strength in the world, he turns into a DDT and plants A-bomb on his freaking head, Nightmare, desperation maneuver, look at him eyeing up A-bomb, what has he got planned, Nightmare picks A-bomb up to his feet, arm over, look at this, Capture suplex, unbelievable amount of strength there from Nightmare, nailing that move on A-Bomb. And now Nightmare is torn in A-Bomb up for a devastator. This could be over if A-Bomb doesn't find a way. A-Bomb, abomination out of nowhere. He put his whole body into it. He gets the cover on Nightmare. That's one. That's two. That's three. Nightmare kicks out milliseconds before the three. What has he got to do? And Avon with a massive shoulder block. I don't think Avon can believe Nightmare kicked out of that. And another shoulder block. He picks Nightmare up, staying on the attack. Double axe handle to the face. And another double axe handle. Avon going for that Oklahoma slam. Nightmare! He turned into a cross face. He just turned into a cross face. He's locking it in. The submission maneuver. The move that Big D tapped out of. The move that Triple D tapped out of. And Avon's reaching for the ropes. It gets his arm out. He touches the bottom rope. The ref says break the hold. A-bomb, great ring awareness to get out of that. Nightmare picks him up. Massive clothesline there. Nightmare's got to stay on the attack here now. Catching Avon with that cross face has really worn him down and made him use a lot of his energy to crawl to the bottom rope. And if Nightmare can stay on the attack, maybe Avon won't be able to capitalize. Nightmare for the cover. One, two, Three and a kick out just for the three by Avon. Series of clotheslines there from Nightmare. He was hoping it was enough, but it wasn't. Elbow to the back of the head of Avon there. And Nightmare going for it again. Avon turns it around into a headlock of his own. And look at this Avon. Massive Irish whip throws Nightmare into the corner. Avon turns him around once he got planned. 
He's moving Nightmare onto the top rope, maybe for a superplex. Nightmare kicks him away. Nightmare standing up onto the top rope. Close line to A-Bomb, knocking him down. Beautiful move there from Nightmare. Nightmare's torn an A-Bomb up for a second time. Will he nail the Devastator this time? A-Bomb, massive spine buster out of nowhere. A-Bomb just caught Nightmare by surprise again. And now A-Bomb is torn in Nightmare up for another abomination. Nightmare falling into Oh, no Nightmare, he just turned into a Devastator. I can't believe he's got A-Bomb on his shoulders. Devastator from Nightmare! Unbelievable strength! This could be over if Nightmare gets the cover. That's it! That's one! That's two! That's three! Nightmare beats a -bomb here tonight on Shockwave 26. I'm happy about that. I am happy, you know. Nightmare needed that victory. He's had a couple of losses in the last few weeks. And that one definitely puts his morale back up. Nightmare cheering. What the hell? Crow just came out! He just slid out from under the ring! Got in! He's put Nightmare up! What the hell? Impalement on Nightmare, oh my god, right on the spine. Nightmare decimated in the ring there. And Crow just looking at Nightmare with them cold, emotionless eyes, looking at the victim of the impalement move, Crow's special maneuver, which has left Nightmare decimated on the floor, and Crow just leaves, just leaves. You can see Nightmare is barely breathing from that vicious maneuver, decimated on the floor. Absolutely sickening, sickening thing for Crow to do. Totally unnecessary. You know, I'm sick of these XWA guys. Again, another Tommy T. Thomas special. The man that is personally, I think, is ruining the show with all these freaking antics. You know, that Nightmare just beat A-Bomb in a one-on-one -on -one contest. A great match, may I add. Nightmare was victorious on tonight's match. And then what happens? Oh, Crow just comes out from under the crowd. We got a freaking replay. Look at this. He just puts Nightmare up into that impalement maneuver. He just grabs him, drops him down impalement, and Nightmare is decimated on the floor before he even knows what freaking hit him. You know, Crow can't attack Nightmare freaking head on. No, he has to calm down and attack him from behind like a freaking pussy when Nightmare's just had a hard fought battle with A Bomb, one of the biggest, baddest men in the XWF. Nightmare just wins, and then Crow just comes down, you know, at the end of the match and does something freaking gay like that, man. Unbelievable. I'm sick of I'm sick of it. It's winding me up. It's getting right up my freaking nose, you know. I'm i I'm just Oh my god, it's just ruining the XWF for me. Now Havoc making his way down for the main event, and Lord Lore intercepts him and says, Havoc. You know, what's Lord Lore want before the match? And Havoc says, what's the matter, Lord Lore? What's up? You know, Havoc obviously is looking forward to this main event match, and Lord Lore says, listen up. I know Tommy T. Thomas said he likes the idea of Dr. Karn being around, because first of all, it winds the owner up, but also for bragging rights. Tommy T. Thomas wants to be responsible for defeating Karn, as well as the XWF roster. Oh, so that is their plan then. They do want to defeat the XWF roster. What does that freaking mean? And Lord Lore says, but let me tell you, Havoc, I don't like the idea of Dr. Karn being about. I hate the guy, and I want him gone. You know, Lord Lore and Dr. Karn have history. They certainly have history. And Lord Lore says, So can I rely on you to destroy Dr. Karn tonight? And Havoc says, Oh, I will beat him. Don't you worry about that, Lord Lore. And Lord Lore says, Well, I'll be watching. You know, I don't think personally Havoc's going to beat Dr. Karn. You know, Dr. Karn, not many people can beat Dr. Karn. You know, let's be honest with ourselves. He's one of the greatest wrestlers in E-Fed wrestling. His legacy stands before him, and there's not many people with bigger bragging rights and a bigger legacy than Dr. Karn. But um, as Tommy T. Thomas said earlier, he wants to use Dr. Karn as a stepping stone for his talent. And Havoc is one of the men that he wants to use Dr. Karn for. So I'm looking forward to this match. You know, we've never seen this matchup before in the XWF. Havoc and Dr. Karn, they've never crossed paths before. And um... I'm definitely putting my money on Dr. Karn, you know, he's fresh, he's invigorated, he's come back, and he's baying for blood, you know, when you haven't been in the ring for a long time, let me tell you, something ticks inside you, I'll tell you why, because the last proper match I had was against a man called freaking Angus, I gave him a bear driver all the way to hell, I can't remember what show it was on, but if you go back, you can watch it, and I'm telling you now, I dropped him on his freaking head, and it was painful, you know, as far as I know, I nearly paralyzed the freaking guy, but that's what he gets for slagging off my commentary, you know? But, um, forget it. Forget Angus. 
You know, I'm just saying, when you haven't been in the ring for a while, the fans are going absolutely crazy. When you haven't been in the ring for a while, you start wanting to get back in the ring. And Dr. Karn, you know, he's a man which has wrestled for a long time. When he's been out, fired from the XWF. So it's been boiling inside of him saying, I want to get back in the ring. 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 And it's over and over. You're sleeping. Your voice is inside your head saying, I want to get in the ring. And now he's, you know, he's come back. But Tommy T. Thomas has lifted the ban at the expense of the owner who's not going to be happy about that. We obviously haven't seen his reaction, but I can tell you now, the owner's been in the bad mood all show, and that is not going to make him much happier. But um, Dr. Korn, he's here, and I'm looking forward to seeing what he brings to the table tonight. Uh, that new Dr. Effin Korn shirt, it says on the back, and that's what the doctor ordered. That's his new merch line. You can buy it on the XWF shop, you know. It's been selling like hot cakes ever since he returned last week. You know, the same Luke Loins. But, um, Havoc is ready. Dr. Korn is taking his shirt off. He's ready. And, uh, let's see how this match rolls out. The ref rings the bell. They're locking horns. Who's the stronger man here when it comes to a tie-up? Dr. Dr. Korn wins with a side headlock. Havoc draws him back in for a headlock of his own. Dr. Korn turns the arm around. Elbow to the back of the elbow there. Massive clothesline there from Dr. Korn. Havoc down on the ground. Gets up to his feet. Another clothesline from Dr. Korn. Havoc up again. A third clothesline from Dr. Korn. Now Dr. Korn using a waist lock. Head under the arm of Havoc. Massive backdrop. Dropping him right on his freaking head. And Karn, waiting for Havoc to get up, plunges him into the ropes. Look at this. Irish whip on Havoc. Havoc going for a clothesline. Dr. Karn bounces. Bounces off the ropes. Look at this. Massive clothesline from Dr. Karn. Havoc flipped from the freaking force of it. Dr. Karn, fresh and invigorated. Look at his belly, belly suplex, throwing Havoc across the freaking ring. Unbelievable display of strength there from Dr. Karn. A man of many suplexes, and that just proved his dominance in the ring. Shoulder block and a knee to the face there from Dr. Karn. Very clean. Very clean. Dr. Karn bouncing off the ropes. Look at this. Leg drop. Massive leg drop. Getting the leg hooked. Where's the ref? There he is. That's one. That's two. A kick out there by Havoc. He got a shoulder up. The ref said his shoulder is up. But Dr. Karn is staying on the attack, dominating this match early on. Havoc turns the arm around. Karn turns the arm around himself. Look at this. Hammerlock there pushes him away. Karn runs in. Another belly to belly. Throw in Havoc like he weighs freaking nothing. Unbelievable suplexes here from Dr. Karn. Picking Havoc up from behind. Head under the arm. Look at that backdrop. Dropping Havoc again. Onto the lower neck and the upper spine. Dr. Karn picking Havoc up. Knee to the face. Unbelievable. Dr. Karn dominating. That's one. That's two, and a kick out there by Havoc. It's not enough to keep him down. Dr. Karn grabs Havoc, slips behind him in a waist lock. Oh, Havoc turns into a side headlock of his own. Elbow to the forehead of Dr. Karn. I think that's the first offensive move. A clothesline there from Havoc. Could this be Havoc's moment to break back into the match and try and take control and take dominance away from Dr. Karn? And Dr. Karn went for a clothesline. Havoc managed to throw him over a fireman carry style and stand on the attack with a side headlock. Havoc, a belly-to-belly -belly of his own, a side style belly-to-belly. -belly. Leg hooked, that's one, and a kick out on one by Dr. Karn. It's not enough. Dr. Karn getting up to his feet. Havoc staying on the attack with heavy elbow slams there. A clothesline style haymaker punching Dr. Karn. Slips onto Dr. Karn's arm and massive DDT. Nailing the doctor right onto the face. Vicious move from Havoc. He's starting to take control of this match now. Bouncing Dr. Karn off the rope. Goes for a clothesline. Dr. Karn slips under German suplex. Massive German suplex. And now Dr. Karn is beating his chest. What are we going to see Dr. Karn hit on Havoc here? This is not looking good for Havoc. Oh, Havoc turns around. Slips under. Using a waist lock. Head under the arm of Dr. Karn. Massive spinning backdrop. Nailing Dr. Karn into the mat. Great awareness from Havoc. Dr. Karn already had him. I don't know if he was going to give him a stethoscope kick. An operation, neck surgery, I don't know, but it doesn't matter because Havoc found the way out. And again, taking control of the match with an elbow to the back of the head of Dr. Karn. Havoc using a combination of punches. Dr. Karn blocks it, a punch to the forehead of Havoc. Knife edge chop there from Dr. Karn, following up with a haymaker clothesline. Stunning Havoc, punched him into the corner. Havoc double feeding his way out of the corner, neck breaker drop. Stopping Dr. Karn's offense, and now Karn. In a bad place, Havoc puts his legs around the head and an elbow to the forehead. A vicious move. Havoc going for the cover. That's one. That's two. And a kick out again by Dr. Karn. It's not enough to keep him down. Havoc staying on the attack. Goes for an elbow. Karn knees him in the stomach. And now Karn on the attack with these vicious strikes. Punch 
punching Havoc into the corner. Havoc turns Connor around, chucks him into the corner himself. Nice shot to the face from Havoc, and another one. A third shot there. Dr. Karn slips down to the bottom of the corner, and now Havoc just choking him out with his knee. The fans are booing, but it's all right for Havoc because he's in control of the match as he picks Dr. Karn up to his feet. Look at this. The strength in Havoc. Karn's on his shoulders. Samoan drop from Havoc. Viciously placed move in the center of the ring. This could be over if he goes for a pin, but he's not. Havoc's gone for the chaos clutch. His signature submission hold. And he is locking it and applying the pressure on Dr. Karn. A bad place for Karn as he's trying to reach out for ropes, but he's nowhere near. And Havoc knows he's just got to apply the pressure. Karn, all the strength in the world, standing up with Havoc on his back, and he slams him down. Desperation move there from Dr. Karn as he picks Havoc up. Look at that short arm clothesline there from Dr. Karn. Somehow finding a second wind. And another short arm clothesline there from Dr. Karn. Lifting Havoc up. Havoc, Bowden Lightning! Where did that come from? Havoc just hit his special maneuver on Dr. Karn. The fans, their drawers are on the floor. Havoc, that's one. That's two. That's three. No, Dr. Karn kicks out just before the three. The Bowden Lightning. Not quite enough to keep Dr. Karn down. Havoc can't believe it. He picks Dr. Karn up. Going for another Samoan drop. Dr. Karn and the elbow to the back of the head. Short arm clothesline there. Dr. Karn somehow again finding a third wind here. Double axe handle from Dr. Karn. Another double axe handle from Dr. Karn. Look at this. Grabbing Havoc. Oklahoma slam. Dr. Karn slams him into the mat with vicious power. Havoc's in a bad place. Dr. Karn picks him up, turns him around. Oh, God, he's locked it in. The operation. The operation. He nails the operation on Havoc, twisting him down to the mat with precision. That's one. That's two. That's three. Dr. Karn is victorious here tonight on XWF 26. You know, Tommy T. Thomas put Havoc in the match. It wasn't enough, I'm afraid. Dr. Karn comes out on top. Replay here. Turns Havoc around, locks him in the operation. The fans go crazy in the operation. And that was just not enough. And now Dr. Karn picking Havoc up at the end of this match. Look at this. Throwing Havoc out the ring. Havoc backflips over the ropes, crushing to the outside of the mat. Dr. Karn celebrating with the fans as he is victorious in his first match back here in the XWF. You know, the fans are cheering the doctor. They love the doctor. And I will say that was an impressive performance from Dr. Korn there. He definitely beat Havoc convincingly. Havoc had some good offense, but Dr. Korn was definitely the better man here tonight. The fans are still just cheering for Dr. What the hell? Static's running down the ramp, running in. Oh, Dr. Korn just grabbed him, turned him around. Operation on Static out of nowhere. That's what you get for trying to interfere in Dr. Korn celebrating with the fans. You know, Static no business here, but he got dominated by Dr. Korn. It throws Static over the top rope, crushing to the outside. What the hell? Insano's just come out by me, running in from the crowd, getting in the ring to get Dr. Korn's stethoscope kick. Shutting down Insano. You know, these people have got to learn. You don't mess with Dr. Korn. He always knows you're freaking coming. Throwing Insano over the top row, crushing to the outside. Matt King now from the crowd with the no holds bar title. He's going to run. Hey, Korn. Oh, no. He went to hit Korn with it. Clothesline from Dr. Korn. Turns Matt King around. Dr. Korn. Dr. Korn. Operation onto the freaking belt. Oh, my God. I'm thinking about it. Just broken Matt King's freaking nose. Now Dr. Karn picking Matt King up, throwing him over the top rope. Matt King crumbling to the outside. Dr. Karn's got the no host bar title and just throws it onto Matt King. Degrading. What the hell? Lord Lore's music playing. He's had enough of this. He's had enough of these people coming down to try and stop Dr. Karn, to try and take Dr. Karn out, to try and injure Dr. Karn. And I'm guessing Lord Lore is playing by the rules. If, if you want something done, you got to do it your freaking self. He's walking down. Dr. Karn is just looking at Lord Lore. You know, the man that came down, interfered in the beatdown of Luke Loins. Dr. Karn freaking threw Lord Lore over the top rope. And I'm sure Lord Lore is not going to be happy about that. And he gets in the ring. Dr. Karn just standing there looking at him. Lord Lore is asking for a microphone. And, uh... Dr. Korn's got a microphone as well here, and Lord Lore says, Dr. Korn, you know that I've never liked you. Tommy T. Thomas should have had the security just remove you from the premises. Maybe that was the one thing the owner actually did right, was fire your sorry ass from the XWF. And Lord Lore says, well, Tommy T. Thomas wants you around. He wants to be the one to break you. He wants to use you as a stepping stone. But ever since I arrived here in the XWF, 
I have dominated. I've made examples of the biggest names that the XWF has to offer. But you know what? I don't want Nightmare. I don't want Luke Lewins or A-Bomb. I want you, Dr. Karn. Because the one thing that haunts me every day is knowing that you beat me. He did. He beat Dr. Karn, beat Lord Lore in the XWA. And Lord Lore says, I won't rest until I know that that match was a fluke. So I don't care what your plans are for Warpath. I want Lord Lore versus Dr. Karn. Oh my god! And Dr. Karn says, Lord Lore, back in the XWA, I did beat you. You had the CWO guard in your back. You had Tommy T. Thomas on your side. You had every wrestling critic and fan believing that I had no chance in hell of beating you. But you were wrong. Because on that night, I beat you for the XWA world title. He did, it's true. Dr. Karn is speaking the truth. And Dr. Karn says, and I tell you now, it was no fluke. Because the doctor doesn't do flukes. The doctor prescribed you a heavy dose of neck surgery. And when your shoulders hit the mat, one, two, three, Dr. Karn stood tall. Lord Lord's not looking happy. And Dr. Karn says, so you want the doctor to prove it wasn't luck? Well, that's fine. Because that's just what the doctor ordered. Because not only do I get to kick your ass again... But I regain the XWF world title. And Lord Lord says, I've waited a long time to right this wrong. To prove to the world that Lord Lore has always been better than Dr. Karn. These two men, this is getting heated. I can feel the fire. And Lord Lore says, I don't care what anyone's plans are. This match will happen. And the lethal litigator has sentenced Dr. Karn to death. At Warpath, I will be the judge, the jury, and the executioner. Lord Lore sounds very meaningful with his words. And Lord Lore says, and Dr. Karn, you know what? Your blood will wake the night. And one more thing. One more thing. Hell in a cell. What the? Oh, no. No way. Oh, my freaking God. And now these two men are just staring each other down. Hell in the freaking cell? Hell in a freaking cell. This is madness. This is madness. Oh, my freaking... I'm speechless. I don't know what to say. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching XWF 26. Tune in for Aftershock and I will see you guys at Warpath. Oh my god. Hell in the freaking cell?